What's up guys, this is Kim from Einfach Machen. In this video I'd like to share with you how you can leverage the computer vision functionalities from Azure Cognitive Service within your Power App in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. So the use case is quite simple, but I think it's enough to give you an impression of how easy and how powerful at the same time these functionalities are. So I can take a photo in my app here, send this to Cognitive Services via a Power Automate flow, and the flow responses to me what's shown on this picture, gives me a confidence and gives me also tags about things that might be on this picture. So they are basically three tools that we will use in this video. The first one is the Power App where we take our image. The second one is the Power Automate Flow which we use to analyze the image and the third, and the third service is the Microsoft Azure Computer Vision Resource. We will start with our Power App. At first we am going to insert just an image control or a camera control. We use this for taking our photo. I already switched to my laptop camera and in the next step we're going to insert a button and use this button to capture our image. So I use the update context, call it log photo, call it camera one dot stream and this one's fine. I set the stream rate on my camera control to 1000 so that there is a new image in the for the stream every second. And I will also insert a second button with which I can switch my camera. So this one is pretty easy. I will explain it to you in a second. I'm just doing a small, pretty simple if clause. So if the camera is less than the maximum ID of the camera available devices, then it adds one to the camera ID and writes this into this context variable. Otherwise, it, it sets this context variable to zero. So if we have a look on our available devices, there are three devices. And I just want to switch between the different devices by setting this local variable. And so I'm replacing this zero with my lock device. Use the switch camera. And now I can switch between my different cameras. I'm currently using the main camera, this one in UBS, so I can't use it in Power Apps, but that's basically how it's done. So now I want to see my image before I'm using it in my Power Automate flow. So I'm also adding a small image control and this variable, I've set the photo that I want to take and I will display it in this image control. So smile, that's basically the photo I'm using right now and this takes us to the next step we now want to use this photo in a power automate flow and then analyze this picture leveraging the cognitive service computer vision functionalities from Azure so I will call this something like center cognitive services and we will use this button later to trigger our flow and that will be the next step now creating the flow that we need for this functionality. So as the first step, I will create a new flow and this will be an instant flow. I call it analyze image from Power Apps. Use Power Apps as my trigger. And in the next step, I'm going to initialize a variable and I will use this variable to save my image in this variable. So I will call it var image, type string and ask in Power Apps for its value. So that's basically all we need from our Power Apps. So we can now integrate this flow into our Power App. I've switched back into my Power App and here's already the flow I've created for testing this functionalities. Don't want to create a new flow. I want to add a flow. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I will select the flow. Use this my center cognitive services. I want to save my flow response later so I already will use context variable for my flow response call this log flow response and leverage my flow and what we need is the image that we saved in our local variable in our context variable so we put this in here closing the update context and let's fire the flow so back to our flow. There we can see it was the first run. It succeeded. And if we click to download, this is basically the 
JSON for our image. And now we need to do some modifications to this JSON, but it's pretty simple and after that we can analyze this image so i will initialize another variable and i will call this var split text value so this is basically the text that i define for splitting my variables that i can remove the header information of my image value so i will use the base 64 comma and just to explain this to you we can have a look on where we can find this value or this base 64 string and why we will use it in the next step as a split value. So this is our JSON and if we hit the search function and see that there is the base 64 comma and we want all the content after this value. So we will split it and then we can choose if we want the first part of it. So basically this stuff or if we want the last part of it, so basically this stuff, what we will do in the next step. So we will initialize another variable, click initialize variable and call this our image base64. That's also of type string. And now we need to use some expressions to split our variable and then use the last part of it, but it's also not that hard. So at first we start with our last function and now we want to split text and this is our image variable we want to split the image variable based on our split text value so that one we've defined in the previous step and that's it basically so now we're getting just the last part of our image variable based on where we decided to split the variable and we did decide to split this on the base 64 where this string appears so we can again test it have a look on the value and if we compare this one to the previous then we can see that here's all this data image png base 64 stuff and we've split this so that we just get all the stuff that comes after our base 64 comma so that's it basically so there's one last step before the fun begins with analyzing the image and this is the compose action you can look for compose and then just put this code in here so this is a json schema we need to use in our cognitive service computer vision azure service and for the content we've defined our image and this is just a json i've also googled it and leave it like this so we need to provide the analyze image action with this compose output so in the next step we will look for the analyze image we choose this one and now i can decide from where this comes my image content and i will choose the compose output and in your case if you do not already have an azure subscription this action might ask you for your azure subscription so in my case i have uh, already created a resource for this and i wish quickly show you how you can set up this resource so that you can use this in your flow so i've switched to the azure portal that's on portalazure.com and now i can create a new resource and I will search for computer vision and create. In my case, I have Azure for Students subscription, so I can test all these different services. And I will create a new resource group for this and call it Analyze Image Computer and choose as the region, the region that is next to me. This also for name, I like this kind of pricing. In my case, I've already used the F0 pricing for another resource that I created. So in your case, I would recommend just for testing purposes, choose the cheapest pricing tier that is available to you. And of course, you need to agree with these terms above and click on review and create and now the deployment of the resource is in progress and it's already completed so i can go to the resource and now what i need to create a new connection in my power automate flow i need to get my endpoint and api key so i click here to manage keys and select my key copy this to clipboard and now i can click here on add a new connection enter my api key and enter my endpoint it's called site url in power automate create the connection and that's it basically so now you can see a second connection appears in my case and now i have to select the outputs again save this flow for a second but the last step is now that i want to respond all this stuff 
that my analyze image gives to me to power apps. Therefore, I select the respond to a power app or flow action and call this captions. So captions is basically this value, hand holding a book and the confidence. And the second value I wanted to retrieve are the tag names. And I will call this as a second output tag names. And now I just have to choose this from my analyze image. So here are the captions. This is basically a simple JSON. We will have a look on this in the next step. Also the tag names. Here are the tag names, collection of tag names. I will save this flow. And now I'm back in my Power App and refresh this flow. Now I'm back in my Power App and we already inserted the flow trigger on this button. And now we We'll give it a try. And as we can see, there was an error. And what fixed this problem for me was just removing this flow from my app. And after that, adding it again. But let's give it a second to try. So this one was good, no error. And now let's have a look on our flow runs. So there was a successful run. Let's have a look on this one. <laughs> so my thumb is basically a Wii remote. <laughs> So the confidence level is not that high, but it recognizes me as a person holding a V remote. And it also responded this to power apps in the form of this JSON format in this table. So in my case, I wanted to use the tag names and the captions. And for this, I've used the experimental feature JSON or the experimental JSON function. So after getting my flow response, I've created another variable called log captions. And for this, I've created a table, used the passJSON function. And then from a flow response, I wanted to get the captions. And I will do the same for the tag names. So I copy this log tag names, passJSON still the same, and just select the tag names. So these are basically just these two properties that I respond from Power Automate to my Power App. Give it another try. And if we have a look on our variables, then we can see that there are some values in it. And I will show you how you can make these values visible in Power Apps to make this wonderful image a bit smaller, adding a gallery and just insert a simple label. And in my gallery, I will use the lock captions because that's a table as my data source and we'll insert a text label. And in the next step, I will specify this as this item dot value dot text. And there you can see there's the text, a person holding a V remote. Now we can also copy this one to the right, have a look on the confidence. Now we can see the confidence and we can also leverage this Pass JSON functionality for our tags. So we will choose tag names instead of log captions. And here we just need the value because there is no for the tag names. So here we have the text as our key and the person holding a V remote as our value. And here we just have values person, indoor, holding, standing, and so on. And I will put this to a rep of four. And now we can see all the tags that it recognizes within this image. So let's give it another try. So this is me holding the guitar. Let's have a look on how Azure recognizes this. And as you can see, it recognizes me holding the guitar again. Uh, I think this is a quite good example how easy it is to leverage these advanced image recognition and computer vision functionalities in Power Apps. So setting up this flow was quite straightforward, developing this small Power App as well. I've used some really good resources for this. I will put them in the comments so you can have a look on their blog posts and on their videos as well. I think this is a nice use case to get started with these functionalities and I hope you like it and see you in the next video.